So we do have a little bit of a cross one. I'll say with that flag, which is uh, interesting. I, you know, I don't usually have somebody checking the crosswind before I go down the road, but. So everyone, welcome back to the channel. With me today is Alex Calixto. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you. Today we're back in an Alfa Romeo 4C. Now, I love this car, and I want everyone to know that because in our first video of the Alfa Romeo, it kind of came off a little negative. And I'll tell you, there's, um, there's nothing wrong with the video. Everything we said in there is 100% accurate. All of the problems with this car are 100% true. You know, there are a lot of shortcomings with this vehicle. That being said, it's absolutely one of my favorite cars to drive. And so I thought today, Alex has never been in one. I thought we'd go out today, get some shots of the car, and uh, take another drive and have Alex take a drive in it as well. Yeah, man, just leaving the neighborhood, this thing is uh, is something else, man. I just, uh, it's going to be, a, I'm, I'm excited. This thing is so cool. Well, you know, what's neat about this car is that it's, you know, it's it's like a little go-kart. Yeah, it's, no, yeah, it's you lightweight. Float everything. Under 2,500 yeah. pounds. It's because it's all made around this carbon fiber tub. This right. little carbon fiber tub weighs like 145 pounds, somewhere in that range. Oh my gosh. With the aluminum subframes, all together this thing is 236 pounds underneath there. Yeah. That's nothing, you know, everything's mounted to that. Yeah. Small engine. Yeah. Uh, 1.75 liter inline four, makes 240 horsepower. By the way, that thing, for a four cylinder, I don't think I've ever heard any, a four cylinder sound nicer. It sounds great. That it's thing got, is amazing. Yeah, it sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's still deep and throaty. Yeah. But it, yeah, it doesn't have that like high high pitched whine or you know that that sound that you typically we'll go straight. Yeah, we'll go straight. The, the, the sound that you typically associate with a four cylinder. By the way, you ran over a penny back there, and I felt it in my back. It, everything about this car is stiff. Super stiff. These little I don't know what do you call these things out in Las Vegas. These little rumble bumps in between the lanes. Yeah, I don't actually know the. We official don't, we don't have the. We don't have those where we live. We just have painted lines. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I, I, yeah. Well, coming from Southern California, we have the same thing. So growing up, it was like, I just never knew that they, you guys didn't have them anywhere yeah. else. Well, when you drive over those, you feel every bit of it. Oh yeah. The yeah. The car has no, it's no power steering. It's very connected to the road. Yeah. And you know, it, it, you, you get the feel of everything that's, if there's a, you know, little tram lining going on, you know, you'll feel that that's, you know, is that a shortcoming? I don't know, maybe. Yeah. But this car, this is not something I would own to be driving around to go to work in every day. You know, no, uh, no, no. no. Know, it, it's, it's, it's too difficult to get in and out of. Yeah. You know, every day for sure. Right. Like you wouldn't drive it every day, but like, you know, maybe on the Friday, if you, you know, you want to impress your secretary, you know what <laughs> right. I mean? I, I think maybe that might be a good excuse to bring it out every once in a while right. because it is, it, it's so far, it, it seems like a, just an absolute dream to drive around and feel sporty without here in Las, especially in Las Vegas. One thing that people need to realize out here is we don't have typically good roads. So the driving experience is all based on the vehicle that you're in. So if you're in something like, you know, an Aventador or something crazy, you're not gonna be able to like really enjoy it. So far, this car feels like just driving around the neighborhood you can have fun with it because it's such a little go-kartish kind of car. Right, yeah. Yeah, this thing is fun. And you know what? It's a good looking car. Yeah. It gets, a, you know, it's not as crazy as, you know, a 488 Pista. It's it's not right, like that. Right. But it is a cool looking car. Yeah. And it gets a lot of looks. I pulled up today to the hotel and there was a crowd out there and everybody's just pointing at it and, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. So it, it gets eyeballs. Well, I think the, the, the red color and the fact that it's a topless, uh, adds to that for sure yeah for the sure. last alpha we drove was a coupe now you can't buy the coupe anymore uh the coupe was wasn't it like a lime green yeah that was a wrap yeah the, the car oh, was black yeah okay. the car was black with a lime green okay. wrap on it you feel like if you have one of these you do need to have a loud color like a red or a lime green i can imagine that's probably why they wrapped it black um because this car deserves a loud color. And it's a, I don't know, we'll, we'll show on some of the shots later, but the metallic flake in this red is really, it really pops. I'm pretty sure this color is called Rosso Competizone Red. Okay. 
uh, Rosso Capetazone tin coat, I think is the actual okay. name. And uh, yeah, it's, more, it's sort of a it's 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 a very dark red, but it's got a lot of metallic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Looks yeah. good. It's yeah, it's, you can feel the you can see the deepness in the uh, in the red for sure, and with the metallic. Yeah, it's great. I like that it's not you know every car blood red. I mean that yeah, that, you know yeah, like your shirt yeah. is red. Yeah, yeah. That's a great color on a lot of cars, but this does stand out a little bit. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. You know, I feel like. Red is such a color that gets it gets used so much. I like to see something a little different sometimes. Yeah. Uh, as long as the reds don't get. Gosh, I'm, I'm, I hate that new Corvette's got a red that's practically brown. Is that like is it like a like a Merlot? It gets terrible. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. Speaking of. Yeah. Almost we like here? we got a McLaren. McLaren. Yeah. I wish I had my camera out to get that one. Nice looking car. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in Southern Nevada and. Um, we have in this neighborhood that we have here, uh, like right across is a vintage yeah. Porsche right across from us. And uh, you're gonna see some cool cars running through here, these neighborhoods, these homes up in here, the, the cheapest home is a million dollars. How do yeah. people live like that? Terrible. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice little scenic drive to go through with the landscaping through here. But uh, today though, I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite places. Um, <laughs> oh man, acceleration! It, you feel it, you know. It's, and I mean, you don't out of a four cylinder. That's I'm a half throttle. You know, I'm just yeah. just a little play. Yeah. As the sign says, slow down. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. It's a 35 mile an hour zone. I think it only really matters during the week when the uh, the school the school zone lights are up. But other than that, I don't really I don't think I've ever seen a police. Like, they know not to give the people that live down here tickets because. They'll just call the sheriff themselves. <laughs> They've got his number on speed dial. So we're gonna head out to uh, Pioneer Saloon, which is an old bar out here in the middle of the desert, actually not too far south. We're about 15 miles south of the Strip, and it's another 15 miles south of that. And uh, it's a cool place to kind of get the car out, a nice road, and then on the back side, after you leave the bar, the only twisty road that we have in all of Southern Nevada is right back there. So that might be kind of fun to take this car out there and uh, experience the only twisty road that we have. Yeah, um, and this car, you know, it, it handles really well. Found that especially uh, interesting because the tires on this car are not really ex extremely wide. No, you know? yeah, and they're, But yeah. because the car's so lightweight, it still has a lot, of, you oh. know, plenty of grip. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to, yeah, you're not you're not asking for grip out here, it's, it's, it's there. I mean, especially under normal driving conditions. Uh, you take this thing to a track, get them hot, and I'm sure you could slide this thing around, but like just driving around, it does everything that it wanted to do. It does it well, it seems very stable, uh, very composed, and definitely stiff. Yeah, yeah, super stiff. It does have a tendency to uh, oversteer a little bit, but it's pretty minor, and you know, something you can control with the throttle pretty well. So, but over, it's just a fun car. I mean, it's, it's yeah. hard to describe to people who haven't been in one. Yeah, yeah. That it, it, for, you know, a four-cylinder, you know, um, car with not a lot of horsepower, else, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. It's I'm, as much fun as, you know, it's as much fun as driving a Ferrari. Right, I remember you, uh, you telling me like, hey man, we're, you know, we're gonna rip this uh, 4C, we're gonna take it out, I'm like, all right, four cylinder, okay, the little small car, but no, man, this is a smile machine. Yeah. You mentioned this car being small. It is small. This thing has a footprint that's just barely bigger than a Mini Cooper. Damn. That is insane. A little bit smaller than, a, say, a Mazda MX-5. Okay. And so it, it, it does have a small footprint. the noise a little bit yeah and we should probably slow it down I'm not saying that we're going 85 miles an hour but <laughs> in case there is any but, law enforcement but that, watching but, but that is the thing though when you're in this car you don't have to be driving you don't have to be breaking the speed limit to feel fast right that's the fun part you know you, that's lost on so many cars that you have to have you have to be going these ridiculous speeds to feel anything and I think they've done a great job of being able to give you that feeling and sensation of speed without actually requiring you to do 120 miles an hour. I find it, you know, I like the looks of this car. If I remember correctly, this car debuted in 2011, okay. uh, Geneva Motor Show. Okay. Didn't actually start coming to the United States until 2014. And before that, Alfa Romeo hasn't really been bringing cars into the country before that, except for a few of the uh, 8C Competizone, 
which I don't know if you've oh. ever seen one, but those are really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're looking at three, yeah. four hundred thousand dollars to pick yeah. one of those up. I've never seen one in person for Not, sure. Nor have I. I've, yeah. I've never seen one in person. Just like a little, see that little door? Can we put it in there? That's the that's the glove box. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's enough for a wall. Is it? Will a cell phone fit? No. Let's you can't sure. this going. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, shortcomings. But you yeah, you overlook that stuff. I mean, it's not that's not what this car is about. Swapping seats. Left leg is in. Letting Mr. Calixto get behind the wheel. <laughs> Am I safe? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, pedal box is insanely tight. Yeah. Yeah. I have a size 12 foot. Even though I'm only five foot four, you know, I've got a size 12. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is a trip. What kind of clutch, what kind of transmission is this? Dual clutch transmission, oh, six speed, yeah. Dual, okay. <laughs> you definitely are getting like, you know, you come in here in a place like this, you're getting stares. <laughs> yeah. The car does, it gets a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. It's a good looking car. And it's also, it's um, it's exotic in the sense that you don't see them. They're very low production on this car. Yeah. Uh, so just a few hundred per year that, you know, that the car has been out. Brakes are very sensitive. Yeah. Brembo brakes. Yeah. Very sensitive brakes. So we do have a little bit of a cross one. I'm seeing with that flag, which is... Uh, Interesting. I, you know, I don't usually have somebody checking the crosswind before I go down the road, but. Oh, yeah. So just in automatic mode, it's super, it shifts really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> It's a smile machine, like you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely want to check the crosswind when you're, uh, when you have a big old open plain desert and you might be doing a little bit of excessive speeding. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, it revs up pretty quick. It's very light. Yeah, you can feel it. Once you get higher to the speed, above X speed that may include another digit, uh, you definitely start to feel um, it not accelerating as hard, but right. definitely below. So that that's, goes back to what we were saying earlier about how this car is designed for, or it feels better in a lower speed environment. I, I think that is, that is why you, you can enjoy this just driving on the city streets. Right now, we're out in the open desert. We're, we're, on, a, we're on a private closed road. Um, ignore that private car in front of us uh, if we do use that footage. But, you know, on this private road, I've been up to 180 miles an hour before, and, you know, you can, uh, this car's not designed for that at all. No, I think the top um, speed on this car is around 160. Is it? Yeah. Uh, you would need a lot of road to get there. Yeah. You would definitely well, yeah, need a lot of road. You definitely need a lot of road. Yeah. A lot of road it, to get it, there. It starts, yeah. to, it starts, that power starts to fall. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you definitely start to, whether it's the gearing, and again, I'm not, I don't really know too much about the technical specs of this car, but I would say that when it gets into the, uh, the higher, the higher speeds and those higher gears, uh, you definitely start to feel kind of the, the, the limit as far as how, it, how the horsepower is pushing against, you know, the air. And uh, yeah, but it's still, it's uh, again, now we kind of came down to regular, normal speed, flat road out here. We're gonna get out to, um, we're gonna go check out the bar, uh, Pioneer Saloon out here, not too far, it's about another mile or two up the road. But then on the other side, there's a nice, beautiful twisty road. And uh, that is where I think this car will shine for sure. But uh, yeah, it, it, at higher speed, you definitely got a little floaty, got a little light. You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it. Uh, for sure, you can feel it translate through the, through the, uh, through the steering wheel. Um, 
but uh, you can start to feel it in the car a little bit. It started to lift uh, a little bit in the front. So definitely not designed for the uh, higher speeds at all. But still, nonetheless, I mean, you're never gonna do that. Where, where else are you gonna do that again? Right, you know? I mean, if you're not on a track. Yeah, where, yeah, where even, but even on track, so like, I've gone out to Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch and on the back straight. Uh, yeah, you don't have enough distance. Yeah, you don't have enough distance. In a, in a Corvette ZR1, like a 6 gen, I've been on track with that, and I've gotten up to about 160 on that back straight, 165. In this car, you'd be hard pressed to get up to like 110. 125 so again that's not what you buy this car for you buy it for like the infield part of the track where it's very tight and uh and you can toss it around that is where this car shines yeah. but it's nice to see how it does feel if you're a potential buyer and you're like okay i'm out in the desert and i want to get on it it leaves a little bit to be desired at that point right um but for sure i think for i don't know i don't know if that's why most people would be buying this no car no to definitely top end. definitely not anybody but make no mistake about it like that is a reason that if you were interested in that now i know not everybody is doing you know taking out to do the texas mile or going out and doing you know high speed runs if you thought about doing that don't buy this car right if this car is designed for the low speed just uh twisty roads is what this thing's designed for you know but, if you are out in the market looking for one of these this car you know it's i consider it reasonably priced they've held on to their value pretty well this car i don't know what it's stickered for this one is a 2016 spider it's got the carbon fiber package on it it probably stickered somewhere north of 65 grand yeah uh maybe even up to as much as 80 depending on what's on i don't know the, all the specs on this car specifically but um that you can pick this car up today somewhere like on the low end like if you were really looking for like the cheapest one out there you could probably pick up a 2015 4c for maybe maybe you grab one for 49 50 grand okay you could get okay. a real nice one for 60 grand okay and so they've held onto their value pretty yeah. well and uh, yeah. but and i think it's fairly priced i mean you get a lot of car for that this yeah. is this it's it's a lot of entertainment what I, what I love about this car, obviously with the red paint, you mentioned it earlier about, you know, you're going through the uh, the valet at the hotel. We were just over at the gas station and it was literally turning heads from, and, and ironically enough, turning heads from, from females. Women right. actually were looking at this car. Right. Which and, usually they don't. Yeah, no, no. You drive by in a Lamborghini, yeah. don't pay attention no, to you. No, no, no. It's that, so weird. Yeah, I think get, they call this cute, this car. Yeah, very, yeah, this is a very much a chick magnet because she would probably think, maybe he'll let me drive it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, which I totally would. I'd let my wife drive it. Um, it's definitely, would, she would love this car, you know? She has a two-door Roadster herself, and this thing, she, I think, would have fun. It, you know, the power, lack of power steering on the city roads. It's, if, if you're in a park, if you're backing out of your parking spot at work, yeah. that's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a little upper body workout, yeah. but you know. For sure. <laughs> but once it's moving, you know, it's great. Like, you know. Yeah, get up. Yeah, this thing is. Yeah, it's uh. Once you get this thing moving, you don't. It feels very, very uh, easy to turn in. Yeah. Uh, for sure. It's just mainly, um, you know, getting getting around shopping centers and like, you know, that, that, that it's not what it's meant for. It's like maybe, you know, take it to work, but then don't take it to the grocery store. You're not gonna go to the grocery anyway. Yeah. I, you were in the back. This thing has. <laughs> That's right. I've got one small little camera yeah. bag in there, and. And plus, I don't even like having it back there because, first of all, that like the, the trunk yeah, yeah, it's right the there next right to the there, engine, yeah. so it's probably cooking my camera gear as we speak. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not practical in any sense. Yeah, like I, yeah, you could probably pick up, you know, a pack of sushi at right. the grocery store, but I don't know about. But by the time you get home, it's cooked. Yeah, you're not doing a Costco run. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, you're not doing a Costco run in, in this car at all. Back up right there. Yeah, you can back up there. No backup cameras. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, it's it, it's uh, missing that, and it doesn't have. It's got. It may have backup sensors. That's an option on this car. I don't know if this one has it, but uh, I tend to use the old-fashioned backup sensor. In my head. <laughs> and, and and truthfully, like the way that the uh, the clutch engages in this automatic transmission, it is kind of sketch because it doesn't creep. You have to give it some throttle. Right. But the brakes, the low-speed braking in this thing. It, the brakes catch at the top of the tra pedal travel, and uh, and that makes it for kind of like a little more reassuring that you know like you're not gonna run into anything. But uh, I feel like we're good right here. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go into neutral. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, check this place out. Yeah. Cool. All right. 
Check, check. <laughs> we are ready and raring to go. I guess we'll put on the paddles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you kind of have to like left foot break it to kind of get it right. rolling backwards <laughs> on that little hill. Yeah, even yeah, even coming up over there wasn't that big of a deal. Um, as far as like getting it uh, getting it rolling. The question is, what is the speed limit through here right now? Because this is the town. This is the beautiful town of was it Good Springs? Is that what they said where we were? Good, yeah, Good Springs. Good Springs. Yeah, like I've, I, I go to the bar. I've been, you know, this way like once or twice. Um, but yeah, man, look at this. It's just like an old town, you know. Now, will this downshift for me automatically? It will if you don't do it. Yeah. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it that way. Okay. Is this a circle? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we're getting ready to be uh, uh, deliveranced any moment. Where's Ned Beatty? <laughs> Squeal like a pig, boy! <laughs> oh, is that a coyote or a dog? I don't know, I think it's a dog. I think it might be a coyote. Hyena. Okay. Yeah, so right now going through this twisty road, you can definitely, I mean, this, this is not the best road in the world, but you can definitely feel how it hugs the ground. But uh, yeah, a lot of uh, rocks on the road over <laughs> here. Uh, now we're on the yeah, the tires are still a little cold, you know, but uh, this should warm up pretty quickly. Sunday drive. 
driving and it's still a whole lot of fun. Right, it's, yeah. we're not really going up super fast right now. No, not okay, at all. We're, we're behind the family truckster. Yeah. But it's still fun to drive. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a smile machine. Yeah. I mean, if you move to something like, you know, Audi R8, Ferrari, Lamborghini, as you go up that food right. chain, like those cars are, they're, they're next level. That's different. Yeah, yeah. But when, when you talk about dollars per smile, this thing is there. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. And it's going to give you the feedback that you that you want. And uh, I don't know, sometimes when, you, when you're when when you you're spinning and driving, you want your kidneys to bleed just a little bit. <laughs> so, and, and that's what you're going to get with this, uh, on this road in particular. It's, uh, you're definitely going to have that kind of experience. But, uh, you know, on the regular city streets, they're a little more smooth. Not as bad, but, uh, but yeah, as long as we avoid any major potholes, um, you know, you're so connected. It feels good. But, yeah, this is uh, kind of the place to take the car out and experience a little bit of twisties, you know? Yeah, fun. Yeah. And the you, car is so stiff. Yeah. The car is so stiff that it just it stays absolutely flat in the curves and oh yeah 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 it's really nice yeah. but same thing all that stiffness translates to you know a little rumble on your yeah. butt and the seats uh they have <laughs> zero padding whatsoever no, no it it's, is, like a, yeah. it's like a yeah it's like i think it's, it feels like a you remember those uh mats in gym class when you were in the seventh grade oh yeah for sure yeah it's exactly yeah. i feel like they just yeah. took one and shaped it like a seat yeah exactly well i think this might be even worse than that but that is as close <laughs> as you can get but this is uh yeah we will uh what do you think turn around right over here Sounds good. Go the other direction. Yeah. Yeah, we can rip it the other direction. Right. Oh, it's not bad, is it? Yeah. All right, not too bad on that little uh, turn. And let's see what she does. Uh, I, I think that might be something that uh, we have to do here. We have uh, 
there's a couple tracks out here that we could uh, take this thing out to. But yeah, yeah, that was fun. What do you think? Exciting? I'm excited. I didn't pee <laughs> myself. But you didn't? No. Not, not at yet. all? Not yet. Okay. Well, I think that was the... Uh, probably because I'm just, I'm dry from being in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, that, that was probably the, uh, the, the craziest that we're going to get through here. Um, you know, on this, on this, taking this car out, but yeah, man, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun for, for what, I mean, like I said, smiles per dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't be beat. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh. But that's what I mean, you know, for this, you, I wouldn't have expected this car to be one of my favorite cars to go drive. No. You know, a four yeah. cylinder. Yeah. You know, I, I was, you know, it's, it's a you know, dual clutch, you know, I'd rather have a manual. Right, right, right. I'm right. getting more, I'm, I'm not like some of these diehard guys that are just like, they have to have save, a stick. Yeah, save the manual, not one of right. those guys, huh? I, you know, and the reason is, is I've, I've come to the conclusion, the, the right conclusion, which is that you can't shift like these modern transmissions. You just can't no, do it. Yeah. Um, there's fun in this, you know, there's fun in yeah, rowing yeah. gears. I think the rowing gears is, is designed for the cars that maybe don't have the performance that the, the dual clutch cars have. Like you get on the higher end that and stuff like that because you know it's just you need a dual clutch to, to, to extract experience with the car yeah. yeah to extract all that type like a c8 corvette for instance a c8 corvette with a manual transmission i'm sorry that that's just not as fun pushing it to the limit as you could do it with a dual clutch it's just so much faster it's so much the shifts are instantaneous yeah. you yeah. can't I, the, yeah. it, I feel like when i shift that corvette the second my finger touches the paddle it's shifting yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You, you, oh, can't yeah. Even, you can't even tell how quickly it happens. Yeah, I remember the last time we were out here, I got about uh, you know a couple miles worth of seat time in that uh, C8, and I was just blown away. That was the first time I got to experience one. Um, yeah, that time that you guys had that C8 was uh, was awesome, and uh, I definitely want to get more seat time in those, um, but uh, to experience a little better because you know we just did a quick little drive, I think down the strip, and um, but let me say this car, I had. Uh, my expectations for this thing were more high, you know. As you look at the numbers: 200 and what, 40 horsepower? 40, yeah. Um, no power steering. Uh, you know, it wasn't. I didn't really think about that. I would love it as much as I have. And uh, yeah, man, I truly think this is a very fun car, and uh, and I highly recommend it for anybody that's in that niche market that wants something like this you know it, it's not your everyday daily driver um, but if you want a designated car to just take out uh, and have some fun with and also turn some heads and turn the right heads you know when you have girls I, we were over at the bar uh, no we weren't drinking at all but we were over here at the Pioneer Saloon and uh, I noticed because we we're sitting at the bar and when people were walking in the car was parked out front and I saw I could see people like turning their heads to look at it you know and, and it was all all different kinds all ages you know all different kinds of people were actually looking at the car and uh, and like what is that you know and because again it's rare you know there's not a lot of them out there so yeah Great car, great car, so much fun. I had fun today. I had a blast. If you're um, if you're hoping to get more seat time in a C8 Corvette, uh, just hang tight because uh, I'm I'm making an order. Oh. I'm gonna purchase one. Really? Yeah. Now you're just gonna get like a regular. Oh, C8? here we got it. What do we have? A oh, there was a nice 458. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Ferrari. Probably want to experience the same road that we just experienced. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a hold of uh, the Chevy dude, Mike Davenport. Okay. Uh, he's uh, local to me in uh, in Louisville. We're gonna hook up with Mike. I'm gonna order a Corvette, and uh, I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to be one of the first people to get a hold of a of a Zora. That's if a oh, Zora, damn, that was if sweet. it becomes a thing. So if that car yeah. materializes, yeah. I want to be first on the list. Oh man, yeah, that'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah. This, you know, this is obviously apples to uh, oranges with the, with the C8. Um, obviously, they're both sports cars, but that's another level. That'll be another level of a car. Well, I hear sure. it's going to be, you know, 1,017 horsepower is the rumor at this point. 850 twin turbo in the rear, electric motor up front, so oh all-wheel drive, oh and uh, wide-body Corvette. Yeah. Who knows what it's going to look like? Hopefully, it'll they'll take it yeah. up a notch. Yeah, yeah. I, if they've done what they've done with the other generations, which is just kind of like basically take it to the gym and pump it up a little bit uh it's gonna look so amazing that's gonna be cool man 